Welcome to the last session of day two of Streaming Media East Connect 2021. I'm Eric Schumacher Rasmussen. I'm the editor and VP of Streaming Media. And welcome to another episode in our fourth, yes, our fourth virtual event. We got one more virtual event coming up in August, and then we are planning on being back in person for Streaming Media West in Huntington Beach in November. So stay tuned. Steve Nathan's Kelly is going to put the link to Streaming Media West in the chat. The link is there. Sign up for updates. You could even register now if you want it. Um, and uh, we're going to be getting the program. Maybe you can't register. I shouldn't have said that, but you can at least get some more information about it. Uh, this is the biggest Streaming Media Connect yet. We've had uh, we've got 33 panels and presentations this week and next week, followed by the Content Delivery Summit next Tuesday, May 25th. As always, all of the archives will be on our YouTube channel, and Steve is also going to put the link to the YouTube channel in chat as well. A couple of housekeeping notes. We are going to have the chat open, but we do ask that you put any questions for Anthony in the Q&A. At least I believe that's his preference. He will tell you otherwise when he gets on camera. And before we jump into this session, I'd like to thank our diamond sponsor for Streaming Media East Connect, Signiant, and we have a short video message from them. When the director calls action. And action. When the game is on. It's or it's time to save the universe again. See, media Shuttle is there. Trusted by more than 25,000 media companies, Media Shuttle delivers, making it easy and secure to send any size file anywhere fast. The journey begins with Media Shuttle portals, customized and branded for any project and designed to be so easy, your end users will love it. All while giving operations teams complete control through a simple yet powerful admin interface. Add users, set permissions, customize file delivery specs, and report on all activity. Blast off with proprietary acceleration technology. Media Shuttle moves your content anywhere in the internet connected world at hyper speeds. Along the way, your files are protected. Our commitment to enterprise grade security has made Media Shuttle a preferred tool with Hollywood studios, major sports leagues, broadcasters, and more. With Media Shuttle, your files are never handed over to Signiant. File movement is orchestrated between the end user's workstation and your storage, whether on prem or in the cloud. Your IT team simply provisions your storage, connecting it to the Media Shuttle cloud service, and Signiant handles the rest. Get started on your Media Shuttle journey today, a journey without limits. Thanks again to Signiant. Uh, for our last presentation of the day, we've got a good one. Anthony Barocas has been one of our most popular presenters at all of our Streaming Media Connect events, and I can't wait for this one where he promises to provide 100 plus tips to up your production game. So without further ado, the, the Duke of digital video, the, the pontiff <laughs> of production, the archbishop of audio, Anthony Barocas. Sorry, I'm a bit loopy. Yeah, I can imagine sitting here uh, all day long. And we are four minutes in. I have, like I said, over 100 slides. Uh, and I want to get started. So before, without further ado, let's go over here. And if you can want to pin me, uh, that will make me full frame. Uh, as uh, Steve was, uh, as he was saying, uh, put it in the chat. If you have questions, put it in the chat because I have a multi view in front of me that has my slide presentations and I have uh, the chat in there as well. So will it be available later? Yes, they said these uh, recordings will all be available on the YouTube channel later. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Barocas and I'm here to give you over 100 tips, trips, and links for making your live shows come together. This is gonna be kind of a brain dump. First, a few disclosures. I'm gonna mention lots of manufacturers and products and none of these manufacturers and products have any connection with this presentation. I've not been paid or otherwise compensated. To mention any company or product today, anything I mention is of my own finding or my own use. If I have paid for it, I paid for it with my own money. I try to be clear where I have direct experiences versus things I know about but haven't exactly used yet. I still wanna mention these things because they might be of interest to you. Investigate things on your own, test, test, test before anything you use anything in a real show. Your production and your tools are your responsibility. Now, we have limited time and I have a ton of information to give you. So 
get your pen and paper ready or use your cell phone and take a picture of the screen. So let's go. First of all, in addition to over a decade of articles on streaming media producer, um, I also run the Aiba Tech Thoughts YouTube channel where I do additional reviews and other gear tests that aren't exactly maybe necessarily um, article worthy, like my recent uh, article about my Alienware X51 that I use for some streaming production. So check that out and subscribe. I am also now the head of streaming for DHD Films in Dallas, where we not only have in-studio and on-location production, we have also developed three series of mobile internet connection kits that we can control remotely from DHD Studios. More on that later on. Uh, a few years ago, I founded Stream for Us, which is solely dedicated to providing streaming services and production. If you need to reach me, you can email me, Anthony, at Stream for Us. That's it. There's Stream for Us. Um, there's also a very handy guide on Stream for Us to helping remote guests look their best called How to Look Awesome. Uh, go through that and check it out if uh, you need uh, something to hand on to your clients to look great. So first, let's talk remote cameras because when your guest is remote, the camera is too. For remote cameras, we have the built-in webcams in laptops and some desktop computers. Generally, these suck. <laughs> the, the resolution is typically 720p and the camera itself is not that great at all. Apple made a big splash because finally on the newest IMAX, they put a 1080p camera. Finally. Um, the cameras are easily washed out and the lighting, ha if it has any challenges like a window to the side or behind it, it looks like crap. Honestly, the selfie camera in cell phones or even tablets are a distinct step up. Almost always 1080p or even higher these days. And they're just better cameras all around because people taking selfies, no manufacturer wants to make their customers look horrible in selfie shots. Um, plus, the microphone and earbuds that come with phones are a quick and clean way to get your remote guests to wear earbuds, like I'm wearing earbuds now, for better audio and the microphone picks up less room noise because there's built-in cancellation in the phone. External webcams offer a distinct step up almost every computer internal webcam. Now, I say this with the intent that you actually get a decent webcam. I'm partial to the Logitech. I've bought the C920. I'm actually using the C920 right now. Um, and I find them to be very good looking and reliable. I'm using the 920 because the webcam in my gaming laptop sucks. Uh, there are other good webcam manufacturers out there as well. But if you are spending $12 for a 4K webcam and expecting the same results as a $200 Logitech Brio, you will be sadly disappointed. Let's spend about $100 and you can get a decent webcam that gives you distinct improvement over a laptop uh, webcam. One nice feature of the Logitech webcams that I like is they have Logitech Capture app which is sort of like a little video mixing app. And it works with Logitech cameras, not everybody's camera. Um, the cool thing with this app is it gives you a way to lock the exposure, lock the focus and different settings, manual white balance, manual brightness. But you can also bring in and mix a second input like a PowerPoint and add effects. And then Logitech Capture can share this already mixed feed as a virtual camera with whatever else you want. So if you want to do a multi-source picture in picture into Facebook or Zoom, this is an easy way to do it. It can also record internally. So you have a clean recording free from any internet dropouts and then upload the finished product later. So I guess that kind of counts as like four tips in one slide, but this, we'll just go with that. Uh, 920 rather than the Brio, a huddle cam, which can be remote control to pan and tilt and zoom within the 4K chip. Eh. Yeah, you can kind of do that, but I'm talking just like straight camera, I'm not talking about doing effects within uh, that. Oh, don't post the questions in the Q&A because I only have the chat on the screen in front of me. So post them in the chat so I can see them. So thank you. Uh, da, da, da. The Brio is awesome. Um, and if you have capability to, uh, you have the capability to uh, zoom in on it. So that's really cool too. How does your remote client get that good external web camera? Well, if you can find a decent webcam for sale, get a couple, <laughs> keep them handy. So you can use them for multiple clients. When I looked yesterday, this was it in stock on May 20th. And that will be in a couple days. So Amazon does not even have them right now. You can send them in wrapped bubble wrap mailers to your client and be sure to include a prepaid return shipping label in the bag so they can ship it right back to you when they're done. 
Uh, you can purchase one online and with free shipping, drop ship it directly to the client. And that way you don't have to pay for the shipping. It's already paid when you purchase the product. Um, 360p from Anthony and tech tip session. Yes, that's a Zoom problem. Zoom downgrades everything to 360p. Um, it's someone, if it's someone you want to leave a really nice impression with, leave the camera with them and tell them it's a gift. Like if you get a CEO, you really want to get in your foot in the door. This is a great way to do that. Stepping up from that, there are a lot of digital SLRs out there and not all of them are in regular use. Canon, Fuji, Panasonic, Sony have all released webcam software to connect to their DSLRs via USB and appear to the computer as a webcam. So you can get all the benefits of a large sensor camera with great lens and manual control. Now, I've heard that not all the USB Connect software delivers a full HD image to the computer, but even at a lower resolution, the DSR, DL, DSLR image has a nice look to it. If you have Canon, check out the Canon EOS webcam utility. If Fuji users have a webcam utility as well, page does not look as nice. Uh, Panasonic Lumix webcam software works with most current and recent models. And Sony's Imaging Edge software is actually a suite of apps, uh, one of which provides the webcam connectivity. Regardless of what camera you use, it's all about location. I mean, like, why? When, this is like one of my typical in-studio shots. Why does this look good? Well, first of all, there's no bright window behind me, <laughs> like in this other video I made. The camera's positioned at eye level. I have an interesting and relevant background. So take time to work with your guest and do what I call a tech check several days ahead of the actual live event and have them walk around their house to office and pick the best looking spot. These two images are literally two feet from each other. I just rotated the laptop and sat in a different seat and you can see the difference in the lighting. Uh, maybe you need to have them adjust blinds or drapes, rotate a table, declutter the shelves behind them. We're making TV here and we're doing this not to be a bother, but to make our guests look awesome almost all the time. They understand this and are thankful for your help. Tell them, we want to make you look awesome for this event. If you could just take those stack of papers off the back shelf and put them on the floor for one day, that would help so much. And they really do appreciate this. Is there a fix for the final release of Canon US webcam utility pillar boxing older cameras? That's on Canon. Uh, I have not heard of them fixing that yet. Would love to be able to demo the reframing client camera via Zoom and Brio though. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. When you do the check check, pay particular attention to the lighting, especially if the sun comes in the room. Try to do the check check at the same time the guests will be live in your show so you can see what the room really looks like and be aware of cloudy days versus sunny days. Many times the sun can come right in and hit the guest from the side and unless you know it ahead of time, you have a real problem trying to deal with it on show day. We had two guests with this problem and one ended up putting a sheet on a pole over the up part of the window that didn't have any blinds. The other moved around in the room so the sun did not hit them and that worked out fine as well. Aside from that, make sure there's light in front of the guest. That makes all the difference. It could be a desk lamp reflected off the wall in front of them, or it could be a big table lamp with a big lampshade, as in essence, a softbox. You may even have to turn off other lights in the room, especially if there's a mixture of colors like blue coming from outside, but warm incandescent light coming from the lamp. Why? Well, because this confuses the white balance in the web cameras, and sometimes they'll swing back and forth in color temperature while you're doing things. Don't laugh, I've actually had it happen. So making the color temperature as uniform as possible in front of the camera is important. Remote audio is the next and perhaps even more important aspect to doing a remote. We can get hung up on making sure the picture looks pretty, but if the audio is noisy or hard to hear, it doesn't matter how good the picture is. Conversely, I've had guests who had great audio, usually from a headset with a boom mic, and it didn't matter if the audio glitched or the connection was a rough one, as long as we can hear them cleanly through the glitch uh, it works great. What mic am I using with this webcast? I actually have a little boom mic just to the side of the webcam uh, coming in via USB audio. And if you hear a little bit of background noise, that's the laptop currently working at 51%. So the fans are on in the laptop. 
Um, the audience is very willing to overlook video issues if you've got clean audio. So a USB headset for audio is a great way to make sure the remote guest sounds awesome and they can hear the show well. But many people don't like over the head headsets despite the great sound they deliver to both the user and the show. So if they don't wear any, that always results in the most choppy audio. I bought a Jabra Evolve and I like it because it has a really long USB cable. I actually get up and move around a little bit. I can stand or sit, plus the headset is very lightweight. It doesn't enclose my ears, so it helps them to remain cool. It just sits on them gently. So if I have to wear it for hours, it remains pretty comfortable. The Logitech H390 headset is prone to failure. Okay. However, how we said most built-in computer cameras are not awesome, the same goes for microphones. They pick up the whole room, echo, reverb, all kinds of background noise. They make it hard to hear the remote guest. This is made worse when the guest is also using the computer's built-in speakers to hear. So the microphone is hearing the output of the speakers as well as the person speaking, and then the software has to cancel out the computer audio, and then invariably some of the remote guests' speaking audio gets removed as well. If you can get your guests to wear even basic earbuds, like the basic but good $12 Sony earbuds that we include in our remote kits at DHD Films, you'll be so much better for it because the microphone only hears the person speaking. This is especially important when you have a panel event with multiple people who might try and talk over each other. The audio canceling will always make your remote guests dialogue garbled once that starts to happen. If the microphone hears nothing but the guest, then you are helping to ensure that their audio will come through. We use the Sony earbuds because they specifically do not have a microphone, so it doesn't confuse whatever device they plug it into. If the guest will be standing, or maybe a little further from the computer, we include an extension cable so the guest can put the headphone wire behind their back, like I have. You can see it hanging out on this side, but it's generally behind my back and not as distracting. Make it, makes it less visible. Bluetooth headsets work too. There's no visible cord. That's kind of super awesome. But they also add a tiny bit more delay. So there's already a bit of delay in any sort of remote connection. And if you're going to have uh, instances where people start speaking back and forth, it throws off the natural timing when you add delay on top of a little bit of delay. So Bluetooth or wired is up to you. Advantages and disadvantages for both. If you can add a lavalier mic, which I am actually not wearing today, it can really help to get good quality audio because it always remains the same distance from the person speaking. There are USB models and even models that can plug right into tablets and phones if you decide to go that route. Again, the remote guest's location has a huge effect on sound as well. People love tile and hardwood and glass for the look. It's like the modern look, but it's bad for audio. A big, empty, echoey room sounds like a big, empty, echoey room. This room, I actually have sound tiles on the ceiling. I got carpet on the floor to help suck up some of the sound. If your remote guest has a room with carpet and some cloth furniture in it, it will sound a lot quieter than a big open office. A clean wall, or even a nice picture behind the remote guest can give you nice video to go with the quiet audio. I did one show where the host used an ironing board in her bedroom to put her laptop on. She arranged it so she was standing in front of a wall and a bit of a painting was behind her and it looked and sounded great. Nobody could see the ironing board and nobody was wiser as to what was going on behind the scenes. It just has to look good in front of the camera. Another thing to consider with audio is extraneous sounds. Does your guest have dogs that bark at every person that walks by the house? Is, it, is the house in a busy traffic area? Will there be trucks driving by, a fire truck or ambulance? Is the day that you have the remote event scheduled also lawn day at your guest's house? Will they be mowing right when you need them in your show? Are there doors that can be closed so that kids and other activity in the house or office can be shut out for your guests' time on screen? Ask your guests these questions when you do the tech check. Knowing these things beforehand helps you put together a strategy to deal with it before it's a problem in the show. I take it the people have chose not to set their chat to post to all panelists and attendees. I'm not seeing all these great comments and questions. 
Um, Michael, uh, no, they look like they're all going to all panelists. So yes, if you have comments or questions, throw them into the chat section, not the Q&A, because I'm not watching the Q&A. Let me just move my mouse and see if I'm not missing anything. Nope, nothing to listen in Q&A. So thank you all. Uh, hey, Michael Graves, thanks for coming. Continuing on. Uh, remote connections. Most of the time, your remote guest will not be tech savvy. So having a tech check to walk through things is important. The way they connect is also important. I personally use vMix. It's one of many tools. And it's very has a very easy to use web interface for remote connections. I personally think it's even easier than Zoom and other business chat apps. Now, vMix is one of many multi-camera live switching apps. vMix is Windows only. OBS is another multi-camera live switching app. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. There's also very similar Streamlabs OBS, which touts easier setup connection with their widgets and other Streamlabs offering. Vimeo has Live Stream Studio, and that's available for both Windows and Mac. Telestream Wirecast is another long running tool available for Windows and Mac. Plus they also sell their own dedicated hardware to run it on as well. Boinks, you can correct me if I said it wrong. <laughs> Boinks Mimo Live is available for Mac. It's an up-and-coming tool getting better and more powerful every year. Cam Twist Studio is one of the ones you might not have heard of, available for Mac. Cinemaker is an iOS app that is now available for Macintosh as well. ManyCam is available for Windows and Mac and has lots of features in this tool that not many, many people have heard of. There's also Ecamm Live, available for Mac. VidBlaster is available for Windows. Anybody got a running tally? How many for Mac and how many for Windows? Broadcast Picks just introduced their own software called Church Picks for Windows. Technically, it works outside of churches too, but long-time presentation software ProPresenter also added live video switching capabilities to ProPresenter. So now it's not just for presenting, but it's also live switching and you can do streaming within it as well. And we cannot forget the new tech TriCaster, which started the whole software-based multi-camera switching thing as a video toaster 30 years ago, back in 1990. The TriCaster is a well-established software and hardware solution, integrated solution that really needs to be included in any discussion of multi-camera live switching. I'm sure there's a couple others I may not have come across yet. If you know of one, comment, let me know what it is. Which of those are available software as a service? Mm. The cloud version of the TriCaster is. All the other ones I think are purchase. For, um, and well, the Vimeo one, you have to be, you have to use their service to get use the software. For iOS, I've written about three apps that do multi-camera live switch production. You can look up my article. These include Cinemaker, Switcher Studio, and Teradek AirMix. Teradek used to be called Live to Air. Now it's called AirMix. And there's a comparison chart in the article so you can see which one has which features, which one does green screen, which one does live multi-camera recording, which one does remote guests and everything. And speaking of remote guests, since that's what we're talking about, Switcher Studio is the one app out of the three that lets you bring remote guests right into the Switcher Studio app with video chat, as they call it. It's a pretty cool feature for an iPad app. Now, I haven't found any multi-camera live switching solutions for Android devices, but that doesn't mean there are any. I can't possibly know everything. If you know of some, let me know. There's a big difference between business chat apps and video production apps. Sometimes there's a bit of pushback as to why the remote guest has to connect to your system and why can't we just use WebEx or Teams or Zoom or Google Meetings because that's what they use. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. The main reason is that those business chat apps are not designed to enable producers to get isolated audio, we just call it ISO, and video from each person separately. The business chat apps mix everything together in the cloud. A mm, little bit more on that in a minute. Uh, 
The video production apps are designed so that we can adjust audio levels, gain, equalization for each person individually. We can also color correct, reposition the camera feeds as we need for our show. With dedicated numbers for connections, we can pre-build the shows and multi-views knowing ahead of time who will come in on which remote camera connection, and this is simply not possible with the business chat apps. Now, if there's some overarching reason why a person can't or will not connect directly to the video production app, you can use the business chat apps and then use some tricks to try and get that person's individual feed from the business chat app into your production. For instance, you can dedicate a laptop to each person you need an ISO from. That's what a lot of people do with Zoom. You can pin or highlight, whichever each app calls it, that one person on that one device. And then you can use free software like NDI Screen Capture to grab that screen and bring it into your video production software of choice over the local area network. Or you can send that screen out HDMI and capture that as you would any other camera feed. Interestingly, Microsoft Teams has integrated the ability to send out individual NDI streams for each caller, as long as there aren't too many callers. You're not gonna get 50 NDI ISO feeds over NDI from one computer. And you need to have enough local bandwidth and enough CPU processing power to handle multiple NDI streams at the same time. It also takes a bit of setting up. You know, they've got a whole page on, on all the different steps you need to like do to make this happen properly. Lastly, the audio is still mixed together. But having ISO app output capability built into Teams is a nice feature. If you use Teams, give it a try. We had an issue where a guest could not connect to my show. The specific way it failed led me to believe that the guest was at work behind a firewall and the ports that were needed were blocked by their IT department. This is the case in locked down corporate environments. It's, it's pretty common these days. So we asked her to connect through Zoom and it still would not work. She asked, well, why don't you people just use Microsoft Teams because that works? Well, of course it works better than the one we were using because their IT department made Teams work with their infrastructure. So I loaded Teams on my PC, connected it with my switching software so we could get this guest into our show. So be ready with updated apps for all the regular business chat applications because you never know when that's gonna be the only way to get a specific remote guest into your show. If you're moving video back and forth between different apps on one machine, you're also gonna to need to move audio back and forth between the apps. This is actually harder than you might expect as different apps inside one computer are all designed to play out to you, the person in front of the computer. These apps are not designed to send the audio back and forth between them, especially not specific inputs and outputs. So if you're going to need some virtual audio cables, there's a great solution available called just that, virtual audio cables. You can get one cable for free, but please pony up for additional cables if you buy them, like I did, if you, you pick your price. If you're going to pay $10 for a mic cable that sat in a drawer for all of 2020, then pay a few bucks for the super useful virtual audio cables. On the Mac side, you can use virtual audio cables, but also check out Rogue Amiga's Loopback, which allows you to grab the audio from various apps and reroute it. To monitor the audio, sometimes you wanna hear one app, but not the other. That, and that's not how computers are designed. <laughs> they want you to hear all the sounds from all the apps all the time. So if you're trying to monitor the streaming destination as opposed to the streaming app, you need a way to change the audio levels for the computer on a per app basis. For Mac, there's SoundSource, which I have purchased and use on my Mac. For Windows, you don't even need a separate app. You just right click on the speaker icon and open the Windows Volume Mixer and you get a volume control for each app. And depending on the browser or the version of Windows, you can even get a volume control for each tab in the browser. Any desk, oops, do, 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 do. So I think a slide is out of order, so I'm just gonna wing it for a slide. Um, for controlling remote guests' computer, not everybody is super savvy. Uh, so sometimes we need to reach into their computer and fix things. AnyDesk is the app that we have chosen to use, but there are many of these apps out there. Uh, many others I know rely on TeamViewer. 
Parsec reportedly has the lowest latency, but when I tried to establish that for our mobile kits, we had trouble getting it to work reliably. Even the Google Chrome browser over offers a remote desktop feature. And lastly, the remote desktop is built into certain levels of Windows OS itself. So you don't even need to add software if you have the right version of Windows OS. As I mentioned, we've been using AnyDesk to control remote kits we send out from DHT Films. We have set them up to automatically accept my incoming request with the right password, of course. And this enables me to remotely control the audio and video settings on the computer in front of the remote guest, wherever they might be. Teradici, I don't use Teradici, but that's a great recommendation. There's even a very handy free tool in Windows to allow you to control the webcam connected to that Windows device. Um, it's on GitHub. You just search for webcam settings dialog. And with that, you can set the white balance, exposure, focus, um, gain, color. You can even do zoom. I'm actually using it with this webcam right now to control the various apps, aspects. So if I move around, it does not get brighter or darker automatically adjusting the image. It's fixed. This brings up a good point. Now, you can rely on what the end user may have available, or you can build out, build and ship out your own kits. It could be as simple as sending out a, a good iPad or sending a whole setup with lights, stands, microphones, and everything. Of course, the more complex the kit, the more effort it takes on the remote end to set it all up, configure it, and get it working. This is why at DHD Films, we use a briefcase type kit that's as integrated as we can make it. The computer, the camera, the directional microphone, the earbuds, the built-in lighting, and a cellular connection is all in the case so we can remotely connect to the kit and take full control as soon as they plug it in and turn the computer on. This greatly simplifies things for the remote guest, and it ensures that we can stop the webcam from doing auto anything. There's even hardware like the KiloView E2 and others designed to connect remote sources with your production using robust error correction protocols like SRT. This can deliver a higher quality signal than WebRTC, but the better durability of the SRT signal to overcome internet issues and drop frames comes at the expense of latency or how many milliseconds it takes to get from the source to the destination. The more latency you give SRT, the less dropouts or glitches you'll see, but then the longer it takes. So if you have multiple guests interacting with each other, SRT may not be the right tool to use. There's other hardware solutions like the Endico, which is an encoder and decoder in one. There's the Larix Broadcaster, and at the upper edge, the Matrox Monarch Edge are designed to reliably get those remote cameras into your show from nearly anywhere. Again, this is just a sampling. There's always more products and solutions and hardware doodads and whatnots out there. If you know of something I should be talking about, let me know. Many people also use remote streaming to do remote recording. In fact, I've been tasked to do this as well. The recording will be edited for later use, so there was no live audience and it wasn't streamed anywhere, but the streaming technology was used for the recording. But there are also several very useful tools that are designed around this specific remote recording need and they offer a very specific feature where they don't actually record or where they actually record on the speaker's computer itself. This means the recording won't have any internet glitches. It's uploaded soon after or even during the recording session and either delivered to you or downloadable from a website. One of these is riverside.fm where it's recorded on their computer and then you get the recording. So there's no internet glitches, no varying quality and things like that. Another one is camflare.io and zencaster.com are a few of the resources out there. These are not live streaming apps, but streaming professionals can have these solutions in mind when tasked with recording as opposed to streaming. You can produce in the cloud and no, I don't mean Zoom. Although people have done that and Zoom does have a hook to send a feed directly to Facebook and YouTube. So it's doable. 
but it's really not designed for this. I mean, we've already had a comment in this thread where Zoom is already dumbing it down to 360p. So if you want to use Zoom for your production, that's on you. I mean, we're talking about producing a show with multiple cameras, live switched, video playback, titles, graphics, and more, but running in the cloud, and you can push to any of the destinations we were already going to go. One example is StreamYard, which can handle 10 people on the screen. Well, now one of them is you. So if you're the producer, it's really only nine. There's sociallive.us. And Restream also has a similar solution called Restream Studio that lets you switch between cameras, graphics, and videos, titles, all in the cloud. Interestingly, as of when I made this, it doesn't let you record on their service and download a file, but I think that may have just changed with an update. When I did it, I had to push to Vimeo and then download the file from Vimeo. Showflow is developing a larger studio with 10 on stage at one time, but up to 25 backstage. That's pretty impressive. Now, these cloud tools do not make all the remote cameras come down to you, only your screen view comes down to you and you transmit your clicks. So it's actually very light on bandwidth, which means these can be run with a less powerful computer. So the potential steep investment in a computer and internet bandwidth that can handle a lot of remote callers is almost eliminated. If you want to step up from these three cloud production tools I mentioned, there are even more powerful solutions like Dazzle TV. That's Dazzle.tv, Neuralnet.com. Sony offers their own cloud production system. Vizzert, that's the one name I couldn't think of before. Vizzert now offers what is essentially a TriCaster in the cloud with their Viz Vector Plus, and that's his own. This is a subscription model. In addition, Sienna-TV or SiennaTV.com uh, offers uh, very useful tools as well as media looks. They have a whole raft of remote contribution and NDI tools available to producers who need to integrate remote guests and content. Don't miss GoLightStream.com as well. If you know others that I've missed, let me know. I can add them to the open reel. Yes, open reel was one of the ones that's like um, Riverside and all the other ones, except open reel is very expensive, which is why I started looking for other ones. But yes, thank you for open reel. I couldn't remember that one when I was making this slide deck. O P N E L. I'm going to write that one down. Da, 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 da. Let me be clear, it takes time to learn and master any one tool, especially within the time available with running a business, dealing with clients, building and producing shows. So in running my business and producing shows for my clients, there's simply no time to try and master all the solutions I just listed. So please don't ask me which one's best because I don't know. <laughs> Anyone who does have all the time to learn and master all of these things is not busy working with clients on shows. So I honestly don't think that they'd know which is best from actual practice either. If you have to try them and see if they fit your particular need as each person's need, and sometimes each show's need is different. So sometimes I'm using Riverside, sometimes I'm using StreamYard, sometimes I'm using Zoom, sometimes I'm using vMix and like different different tools in the toolbox. That's the way I look at it. One's a wrench, one's a screwdriver, one's a pair of pliers. Use what you need. Lastly, don't rule out putting the app you know on a server in the cloud. There are many people I know who are putting their favorite production app on cloud servers like AWS, Lumen, and mixing shows in the cloud. It takes a bit of learning to get your production set up on a virtualized computer and some hooks to get your control surfaces integrated to the computer in the cloud. So take time well in advance to learn the process and get it down. Try different connection solutions and see if the virtual computer can do what you need it to do because you may need a different skill of computer than you initially thought. I have an article coming up on Stream Media about how we did the North Texas Irish Festival and had some issues because some of our computers were under spec and that's on us. There's also new open solutions like OBS Ninja, where what the solution does is really limited by your ability to understand and implement what it can do. Thankfully, these tools have online community groups, Reddit, 
Discord, Facebook groups to assist new users to get up to speed and build out the functionality you need. There are literally tens of thousands of people doing exactly what you're doing. You just need to reach out to them for help and then help others in turn. Because as you advance in your knowledge, there's always someone else right behind you who needs the help that you got not too long ago. So be sure to help as you have been helped. It should go without saying there's, pl there's plenty of searchable information and videos on YouTube explaining how others did what you're looking to do or something similar. This video itself will be on YouTube. You'll even be able to see this video and a whole lot of other excellent videos about streaming on Streaming Media's YouTube channel. Maybe not every answer is out there, but many of them are. It goes a long way when asking for help to show that you've made an effort to learn it on your own, but you've hit a roadblock. Many of those in forums and groups seek the same qu questions and issues on a weekly, even daily basis. How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? So I always say, make the effort to develop your own problem solving skills, and it will serve you well, both in solving the problem and in showing the help communities that you made an effort. Often, you'll get an answer faster by looking for it as opposed to asking others to solve it for you and then waiting for an answer. The internet is a fantastic resource, and it's also essential to our streaming business to keep an internet connectivity glitch to, from taking you down, consider a bonded internet connection. At the low end, software like Speedify can give your computer two or more concurrent internet connections to help maintain reliability in tough situations. How does streaming work when you're connecting over cellular? Kind of the same way, except your latency is more and you gotta have a good solid cellular connection. There are also hardware solutions that include bonding services. One of them is Peplink with their speed fusion technologies. But beware those devices that seem to offer multiple wide area network connections to the internet because many of them are just doing load balancing, as in putting different tasks on different connections, not spreading the one stream across all the connections at the same time. Very different solutions, very different results. Bonding requires a server and a service at the other end to put your video stream packets that came across multiple networks back into the order that they were sent before passing them on to the destination server. If there's no bonding service specifically listed on the receiving end or being charged for, there may not be true bonding at all. Several companies focus on bonded video uplink, just the video uplink, not bonding internet. LiveView and Teradek both offer a range of dedicated hardware that ties into their cloud services to offer bonding and multicasting capabilities. Teradek offers a lighter share link service as well as their larger core service, which offers a lot more capability for managing multiple ingest and multiple destinations at the same time. LiveView offers a range of uplink and even bonded downlink hardware and services. Another solution to streaming to multiple places is using a cloud service to allow you to send a single upload at a higher bit rate to multiple destinations. This is called multicasting. One of them is called Caster, C-A-S-T-R. Another one is, as we mentioned before, Restream. They are purpose-built to do this. Some content delivery networks like Vimeo also offer multicasting as part of a much larger suite of services that they offer. Resi tweaks the recipe by using a special protocol or hardware for stream resiliency and buffering with the caveat of an additional de delay of about two minutes from sending it to the recipient's screen. Once you start doing this more regularly, you get into streamlining your production to make it easier and more fluid. This usually involves a control surface. For tools like the TriCaster, they have big control surfaces available, and they are designed for certain inputs and to work a certain way. There are lots of other control surfaces out there that can enable you to pick what every button does and make it work the way you want it to work, even change things up between shows. Some of these tools are, I don't know if you say PI engineering or PI engineering's X keys. I just say X keys. 
Scarhoy's broad line of computer control surfaces type devices that cover simple switching, audio, pan tilt zoom cameras, and a whole lot more. They're literally computers in a control surface. There's Elgato's very simple but elegant Stream Deck surfaces in three sizes, where each key is a fully customizable LCD screen. I have one myself. <laughs> it's one of a couple I have. There's also MIDI controllers, like from Akai. This is one of many different MIDI controllers they have that you can map to control what you want to control, how you want to control it. Behringer also makes a whole series of MIDI controllers. There's also Innovations, very capable, launch pads. You can even use USB game controllers. This sounds pretty far-fetched, but you can really pretty much do anything you want these days. Many of these tools come with their own software, like the Scarhoy and Elgato, but there are also third-party software coders making digital glue that can likely take the controller you want to use and make it work with the software you want to use, like taking a TriCaster control surface and making it work with vMix. These apps include Central Control and BitFocus Companion. There's also Touch OSC, which is a touchscreen-based configurator that you can repurpose, say, an old iPad to be whatever buttons and sliders and knobs you need dedicated to that particular purpose. Even Elgato has made virtual Stream Deck mobile so that you can use an old phone when you need just a few more buttons. VMix has its own internal panel builder to enable you to make a custom virtual mixer that you can use on screen. So there you have it. Uh, my count is 169 tips. Some of those have two things on them. I know that not every single tip is useful to every single person, but we're all solving different needs at different times. So I'll leave you with a couple more. Remember to keep learning. New things are coming out every day. Even updates to things that are already out suddenly make them useful in new ways. For instance, Rode just made an update to the Rodecaster Pro audio mixer. Completely changed the device from just being an audio mixer and recorder to becoming a multi-channel audio interface with the computer and a MIDI control surface for audio. And you can use it to switch video inputs with the buttons overnight. This little audio mixer became like a completely different product. There's likely to be a few things you didn't know about. I'm sure there's a few great things out there that you know that I don't. So comment on this video. Let me know of other great tools and I can continue to learn as well. My name is Anthony Brokus. I am the contributing editor for Streaming Media Producer. You can find me at Stream For Us and I'm the head of streaming for DHD Films in Dallas. That's all I have for you today. <laughs> Mostly StreamYard has consistently released a new feature. Yes, StreamYard is constantly updating it. So that's all I've got. Ah, I went too fast. <laughs>
uh, some things take time. I know, like I use vMix, and the uh, uh, version twenty four for vMix was up and coming for quite some time. COVID tend to throw a monkey wrench into a lot of people's plans uh, for things. So, have you used any five G as yet? No, and I actually don't think five G is going to make much of a difference. Um, two reasons, and, and, I, and I, this is just an opinion. Um, I have a four G Netgear. They also have a 5G version of this. This 4G touts one gigabit of data as a four MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. It's basically got four radio modems in it. It can connect to four different bands on different towers and download data and upload data that way. However, AT&T limits it to one channel. That's usually because there's not enough bandwidth going to the tower to serve everyone. That's why when you go to a big event, there's always these, what they call pigs, set up to provide more cellular bandwidth and capability in an area because otherwise the tower will be overloaded. Now we're going to sit there and say, hey, 5G, everybody's going to have 100 gigabits uh, on their cell phone. No, we can't even do 20. We can't even do 10 for everybody at a big event. We're going to do 100? No, it's not going to happen. Uh, secondly, upload speed is usually not what people are using when uh, at, an, at an event or on location. So um, 5G doesn't necessarily, like if we're only pushing five up or 10 up, you know, suddenly having 50 up doesn't necessarily help me any. So uh, I don't see 5G being a, a huge advantage to uh, mobile streaming. If they could get 4G to deliver on the promises, then that would be awesome because then this little box that I already own from two years ago could start to deliver on the 4G promise, 4G LTE promise that is made. And if you look at their website, it actually does say one gigabit down to this day. And I've never seen that. I'm lucky if I get 100 megabits. Uh, great info on the Nikki modem. Do you have the model number of, the unit, of this unit? This is the M1. And the 5G one is called the M5. Uh, da, da, da. Super Bowl had 63 separate 5G microcells for a partial crowd this year. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, they're going to roll out 5G. That's great. But at the same time, we, there's not enough bandwidth going to the towers to serve 4G. That's why they, we have to keep doing this uh, rollout of the temporary towers to serve large crowds. You know, you go to the Olympics, you're going to see those things everywhere because they're not built to handle crowds, let alone bandwidth. Looks like we got another question in the Q&A. Uh, what open content, YouTube, Vimeo, Twitch, self platform do you feel can be used to bring attendees to your proprietary content delivery systems? And then pull towards a paid content. Why are these your favorites? I don't know. Uh, I would say YouTube maybe because you get a lot of organic search on YouTube. And then if you want to see more, go to this, you know, Roku channel or something like that. Um, that's, that's kind of what I would do. What do you recommend as a holding class for over 2000, holding a class over 2000, uh, at DHD films, um, we are, we have invested in air meet, which can handle hundreds of thousands of people. Um, if somebody needs a solution, give me a call, you know, we can set you up, uh, with, uh, an air meet event. Uh, but I'm not trying to lately sell, but check out air meet. Any chance your 171 slide deck is posted anywhere? No, I just finished it today, okay? So it's not posted anywhere. <laughs> you have created with it. Thank you, I appreciate that. And um, it'll probably, the text in the um, slide deck will probably accompany the video when it's linked to the article on Streaming Media Producer. So if you aren't already signed up to get notifi email notifications, sign up to Streaming Media Producer email notifications for when new content is uploaded. Uh, editors, Steve and uh, everybody, they do a fantastic job of keeping that stuff populated and coming. I found someone that talks faster than me and I love it. <laughs> Only because I didn't think I was going to finish 171 slides in, in 50 minutes. So uh, thank you, Mia. Uh, will you post the PDF? I don't have a PDF. Mm -mm -mm. Gorgeous. Then I will sign up. Yes. Um, I don't know, Steve can maybe jump in and say, or post a link to the sign up area uh, for the newsletters that go out. In the email, very convenient, just shows up in, a bunch of new articles, you can click on them, videos, or got a little thumbnail and everything. Uh, they do a great job over at Streaming Media, that's why I've been happy to be with them for over a decade. Do not go look at my IMDB, uh, not IMDP, I'm on there too. Um, 
LinkedIn page to find out how long I've been writing for them. How about Obvio, which was just used to power the Zoom management recent Tony Robbins event? Obvio. Uh, that might be the software that collects all the Zoom things. I mean, there's the, the Zoom management uh, recent Tony Robbins event. I actually know the people who worked on that. And uh, one of them is actually going to be in my Thursday panel event. So come Thursday, uh, Jeff will be there and Jeff worked on that event. So come to that and you will get to uh, ask Jeff questions directly. Resolum Arena. Uh, yes, Resolum Arena was what uh, put that stuff together. And uh, that's a great thing for assembling things for a large screen, but that's not necessarily a video switching app, which is what I was really focused on. Remote solutions, remote content, television production, that was today's thing. You can kind of go in all different ways. So I tried to hone it, rein it, rein it in and keep it to 171 slides. Hopping. Is that the, uh, that's the online. See, those are uh, the hop in, hop in and air meet are um, virtual event environments. And that was not something I was going to try to um, cover in this just because there's so many of those and the number of those has literally exploded since COVID. Uh, can I do a session on those? I probably can't only because um, I have experience in like two of them and that's not going to be a whole lot to talk about. <laughs> um, and I, I'm actually working in a new one uh, this week called Hoova. So there's, there's lots of them out there. You did great. Thank you, Mia. Uh, do, 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 do. Resolume Arena composite the remote feeds into one large screen. Yes, there are lots of um, large uh, screen um, venue stitching for video walls, and it used to be for video projectors, and you know they do the automatic blending and calibration and everything like that. So there's lots of things out there, but I think um, Resolume is one of the um, more affordable things. And it's, I think it's software based. So you just have to have the computer to do it. And, um, the other, some of the other ones are hardware based question from Shane, which web software based software for the guest. Do you like the most for bringing in remote guests? Well, um, as I said, vMix has, I think this one of the simplest guest and, um, looking things. Uh, but, you know, I have not been on that end of it on all of them to know uh, a great answer to that. So I'm going to say, I don't know. What about interactive touch during video production online? I think the touch wall on CNN. Yep, that's a whole thing I don't get into. <laughs> uh, absolutely, within a or two, there are moving so fast. Yes, those things are, are, they're all just, they're trying to leapfrog each other in features and capability. Avio took the 163,000 event registration, parsed them into a few hundred Zooms or breakouts and allowed any of the webcams in those breakouts to be taken to the Resolume Arena to be shown either in the giant background directly with presenters directly. Yes. So, hey, AV Trainer. Smart people. I don't know why he's in my show because he could probably do it for me. <laughs> Welcome back. Which web breaks off? It could, but uh, no, I have dinner to get to. <laughs> that was amazing. And uh, the on-demand version of this video will be available on YouTube within a day or so. And uh, Steve Niffins Kelly will be taking care of that. Thank you so much, Anthony. That was incredible. You deserve a big exhale after that. And we at Streaming Media <laughs> East Connect will be back in the morning at 10 a.m. Eastern with, I believe, the first panel of the day is on uh, streaming in uh, faith-based organizations, particularly streaming services from uh, synagogues and mosques and churches. So that will be a great way to kick off the day. And uh, we will see you all then. Thanks again, Anthony. And thanks, everyone, for attending and participating. When the director calls action. And action. When the game is on. Is up. Or... It's time to save the universe again. Media Shuttle is there. Trusted by more than 25,000 media companies, Media Shuttle delivers, making it easy and secure to send any size file anywhere fast. 
The journey begins with Media Shuttle portals, customized and branded for any project and designed to be so easy, your end users will love it. All while giving operations teams complete control through a simple yet powerful admin interface. Add users, set permissions, customize file delivery specs, and report on all activity. Blast off with proprietary acceleration technology. Media Shuttle moves your content anywhere in the internet connected world at hyper speeds. Along the way, your files are protected. Our commitment to enterprise grade security has made Media Shuttle a preferred tool with Hollywood studios, major sports leagues, broadcasters, and more. With Media Shuttle, your files are never handed over to Signiant. File movement is orchestrated between the end user's workstation and your storage, whether on prem or in the cloud. Your IT team simply provisions your storage, connecting it to the Media Shuttle Cloud Service, and Signiant handles the rest. Get started on your Media Shuttle journey today. A journey without limits.